Mark Twain, a famous writer, expressed that there is no such thing as a new idea. We simply take old ideas and make new and curious combinations. And there is where I believe that the Flutter packages such as Provider has inspiration from React's context and provider concept. And another package that is called vRouter is heavily inspired by Vue's router. Therefore, in this video, we are going to explore the vRouter package, which is a navigation 2.0 package inspired by the vRouter package. So you're going to be shown on how to use it the cool bits of vRouter and the pros and cons of using the vRouter package. So let's get started on how to use it. So over here, we have a simple book web app in link in the description. And this app is using the default navigation or you could say navigation 1.0. Therefore, we're going to convert it using the vRouter. So make sure you have the vRouter package in your pubspec.yaml file and inside the main.dart, instead of using the material app, we are going to make use of the vRouter. So the vRouter, you can think of it as a material app widget with benefits. Now it has an error that says home isn't defined. So let's remove this line over here and you can see there is a message that says the parameter route is required. So let's add in the route. And the route is a list of the route element. So this V route element, you could say it is a base class for all of the V router widgets. So we're going to use this thing called the V stacked object. So think of the V stack as a page route object. And we're going to create the home page as the top stack or just the home page itself. So we are also going to pass a simple path with just a backslash. So I feel this way of adding routes is pretty natural. The next step is we're going to create another V stack for our book pages. So we're going to add in the widget book page, but we are going to remove this book parameter. So in our book page, we can just remove this required syntax. Now let's go to our main.dart. So the thing is, in order for you to go to a single book page, we needed to use a path that have some parameters. What I mean by that is we're going to create a simple path with the book and the ID parameter. So what I mean by path parameter is this colon over here. So we are expecting this ID to be dynamic. So it will change over time. At the same time, we can name this vstack by passing a string into the name property. So this will help us redirect it to the book pages using a named route. Lastly, there is this parameter that is called aliases. So what aliases does is that for any routes that's other than the book ID, we can redirect it to the book page. So if you were to type in in the path backslash book, it will redirect to the book page. Now, lastly, our vRouter has only a couple of paths that's registered. The backslash, the book ID, and the book. But what if there is other paths that has entered in the URL? So we're going to make use of this thing called the vRoute redirector. So what this does is redirects any path in a rejects form to redirect us to the specific page. So I'm not really good at rejects, but this is basically saying any other path doesn't really matter what kind of path that's not registered inside the vRouter app. We're going to redirect it to our home page. All right, once this is done, the next thing is, since we are not passing any book object inside our book page, we can remove the book property. And now we have an error to say that there is an undefined name book. So we need to get the book one way or another. So how are we going to do that? So there is this thing called the vRoute element data. So what this means is basically getting the data from our vRoute component that we have inside our main.dart. So then we are going to make use of the of method and we are going to get the path parameters. So the path parameters over here is according to the path that we get, is according to the path that we set inside our routes in the vRouter. So the path parameters that we are taking in is the ID. If you remember correctly, the colon represents that this part of this path is the path parameter. So then we are going to put in the path parameter ID. Then we are going to assign it to a variable called book ID, 
with the book ID, we can make use of the books global object and we are going to get it from the index of the book ID. So currently for the path parameters, it is passing in a string. So we're going to convert this book ID over here into an integer using the integer.parse method. All right, so once this is done, the next thing is to replace on how we are going to navigate using the V router. So let's remove the navigator and we're going to make use of this thing called the V router data dot of context with the push named method. Since we have named our book page name as book, then we can make use of the string book in our vrouter push named method. So type in book and then there is this path parameters parameter and it takes in a map string string. So the key will be the path parameter which is the id and then the value will be the value of the index. So we're going to grab the index from our list.generate method. However, we need to convert it into a string. So we can concatenate it using the money sign. And now let's save this. And now if I were to click on any book, it will redirect us to the exact book that we clicked on. If I were to go to the last book, it will redirect us to the last book. However, what if we were to put this URL? Then there is this invalid argument null. So this is because inside our path parameters over here, it is null. So what we can do is we can make use of the null catch syntax and then just add in a string that has the number zero. And now if we were to save this, this will then redirect us to the first book. If we were to put our URL as book, so now we know how to use it. The next thing is the cool bits. So the cool bits are history state, data fetching, and transitions. So let's start with the history state. So history state is basically a string that you can pass when going to a new route and then change once in that route. So for example, we have this thing called the V navigation guard. You can think of this V navigation guard as a widget that has different life cycles of a page, but simplified. So we have a parameter that's called before leave and it has the save history state callback over here. So this allows us to actually save it inside our history state according to, for example, account. And then we will return this true to redirect us to the page that we are redirecting to. So let's see a simple example. All right, so I have a simple example over here that is from the vrouter package example. So this app is going to use the history state. So I'm going to sign in myself as Bob and then I'm going to press this button seven times as Bob and then I'm going to log out and then I'm going to log in as Alice and sign in and then I'm going to press this button two times as Alice and the best thing about history state is that if I were to use the back button, I'll go to the login page. And if I were to click again, it will lead me to the Bob profile, which actually saves how many times I pressed this button. And if I were to go to Alice, it will say that it has saved inside its history state that I pressed this button for two times. So that's pretty amazing if you want to have a quick storage for your specific URLs. So the next thing is data fetching. The data fetching is pretty straight. Forward, and I think this is a very good feature for vrouter. Most of the time, we are trying to see whether the user is connected. So in the vrouter, there is this thing called the before enter parameter. This means that before we enter any pages, we will go through this whole block of code. So we will wait if there is a user that is connected. If the user is not connected, we will redirect it to the login page and we will return false as we are going to stop whatever navigation navigation is going through. Otherwise, we will return true to say that the navigation is correct. And lastly, we have transitions. So adding transition is pretty straightforward as well. You can either set a global transition or a local transition. So the global transition is you can add it inside the build transition parameter and then you can just pass in the animation and the child widget through the feed transition object. Then if you want to have a local transition, then you can also override your own local transition animations for a specific page. So for the page of your profile widget that has the path of a backslash, you can then change it to a scale transition instead. And the animation one over here, 
is used in the scale property. So I would say this is a very good way for you to customize your transitions easily. So now you know all of the cool bits of vRouter, the last one will be the pros and cons. So for the pros, it is very view friendly, meaning that if you were to have any view experience, then this package makes a lot of sense. Second is that creating the routes feel more natural. And I really like how they do it. And having the V stacked on top of one another is actually much more pleasant. Lastly, you have the fine grain control on how you want your routes to be reacted. For example, the V navigation guard, which can control on what happens when you leave the page. And I have not mentioned, but you can also set whether you have entered the page or updated the page. But with pros, there are some cons. So the cons would be that it is not Flutter friendly. So what I mean by not Flutter friendly is that it takes a while for a Flutter developer who's very used to using the navigator to understand what this view stacked and navigation guard is. And the final cons would be some naming confusion. So when I was using this vRouter, I was a little bit confused on what is the difference between a vRouter data and a vRoute data. So I'm not sure what exactly the difference is between these two objects, but having these two objects with a very, very close spelling, it's prone to a lot of confusion and errors. So in summary, we learned on how to convert your Flutter app to use the vRouter. We also learned on how to make use of the history state that stores a string for any individual URL pattern. Moreover, we learned on how to fetch the data before we enter any pages and also learned how we can customize our transitions at a global scale or for our local pages. And lastly, we know the pros and cons on using the vRouter. Whether you are very familiar with the view router or it is not intuitive in terms of the way how Flutter does it. So that's about it. If you want to learn more about routing, you can check out the courses on developing a portfolio in Flutter Web or creating a simple landing page that actually touches on how you can do routing in Flutter Web. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down if you want to use this vRouter for your next Flutter project. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.